What is up guys, it's your boy Rick Combat Evolved Cacus, and today we have the complete guide for how to get the brand new Forerunner exotic sidearm just added to Destiny 2 with the 30th anniversary update, and so let's get started. Now the Forerunner is one of two new exotic weapons added with this update, the other one of course being the Galahorn exotic rocket launcher, I've already done a complete guide on that which includes a new dungeon guide so definitely check that out if you haven't but for the forerunner what you're gonna do to start this exotic quest is head to the eternity specifically the treasure trove area of the eternity and then you're going to interact with Zer. and as you can see he actually doesn't have the exotic quest he actually has a few steps just related to this new update. You have to accept one from him, go to the nearby chest, open it up, go back to him. Some pretty simplistic stuff. So simply get through that and then eventually he will offer you the Magnum Opus exotic quest and this will get you started to get the Forerunner. So the first step is to collect seven strange coins. And importantly, I have some big tips to make this go faster. Now it says you can obtain them from Dares of Eternity, Strikes, Crucible, Gambit, Heroic Public Events, or Completing Bounties. But guys, right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you, ignore everything other than Dares of Eternity. And that's because further along in the quest, you're actually gonna need to rank up your Dares of Eternity rank. That's right, there's like a Crucible-ish rank associated with this new activity. So if you do Vanguard Strikes, you're gonna have to just come back and do a bunch of dares to rank up anyway, so might as well stick with that. And another big tip is that during those beginning uh, little quests when you first talked with Xur, if you did pay for this expansion, you're gonna have a resplendent reward package waiting for you in your inventory as you can see. And this can actually contain three strange coins. So open it up and you will instantly jump to four out of seven of those strange coins completed. I think I had one more from the very first Dares of Eternity that it just loaded me into when I first logged on. Now, just before you get started grinding Dares of Eternity, make sure to grab a bunch of the general bounties, you know, stuff from the gunsmith that you can complete while you're inside Dares. As you can see, a gunsmith bounty actually gave me my seventh strange coin, so don't forget that. So, maybe you'll luck out and get three from one package, then get a few from a bounty, or you're gonna be unlucky and have to do a bunch of different Dares of Eternity runs, each one awarding seemingly one strange coin guaranteed at the end of it, but eventually you will get this quest step complete, which is going to update your quest step, and then you have to complete three Star Horse bounties. Now it should be noted that possibly you could go to Star Horse, as you can see it's an actual NPC that you can interact with and collect his bounties. You could potentially go here while you're still grinding your dares for your seven strange coins and maybe have those ready to hand in for this step, but for me, I got it after. And importantly, you can actually gain bonus progress for doing the higher difficulty bounties. So you can see the ones on the far left only reward plus one, Paraversal Hall, and that's going to give you one out of three for this quest step. The silver tier ones, they're going to award two, and they give you two out of three. So you can do one silver one, and then one bronze one, and you're done. And then there's one gold tier one that, as you can see, rewards three, and if you do this one, match game, or at least this week it's match game, this will completely complete this quest step in one bounty. However, of course, this was the most difficult bounty by far. Firstly, you need to complete a legend difficulty Dares of Eternity run, and there's no matchmaking in that. So you will need to LFG or go to a Discord or wherever and grab six people together when you are doing this run. Now, we actually did it with three, you know, fire team members and then just LFG'd the other three people and it really wasn't that bad. Thankfully, our teammates were listening to us when we were saying, hey, hey, we don't have enough points, please don't kill the boss because that's actually another thing. There's three different requirements. There's firstly, you have to get a bunch of kills with a weapon that matches the elemental type of your subclass. That really wasn't too hard. I was using the Vex Mythic class and I was just a solar subclass. Then you have to get some power weapon kills. Again, you're gonna complete those actually pretty fast. I randomly had a sword on by accident. And uh, that's another thing. 
if you guys do a legend difficulty, it is gonna lock your loadout. So make sure you have your finalized loadout before you go in there. And then you will have to get a bunch of points, in this bounty's case, 300,000. So like I was kind of alluding to earlier when we had to beg our teammates to slow down, this does mean that you're gonna have to extend encounters. You can't just complete them as fast as possible. Like you don't want to one phase the boss because you probably won't have enough points. You want to slow down, let more enemies spawn so you can farm them for points. But whatever route you take, whether it's completing one of the hardest difficulty bounty or three of the easiest bounties, eventually you're gonna get this quest step done. Now, once you do, as you can see, head back to Xur and acquire the strange key, which you get for being rank four. So that's why I was recommending grinding dares so much, I barely reached rank four. After you acquire this key, you actually want to kind of turn around, head to this kind of glowing purple area, and it will actually transport you into the area in which the Dares of Eternity activity takes place, except there's no enemies. What you wanna do is head over to the right and you actually wanna line up these rocks here, as you can see, so you can see the bungee symbol, like the seven columns symbol right here. Then once you do activate it, you're going to reveal the next place you need to go, which is just directly ahead of you. Squeeze your way through this cave and you are gonna encounter a little bit of a jumping puzzle. So jump up these icy ledges and then eventually you're going to scale a wall and then get to this big tower here. And in the tower, there's going to be uh, these different juts that go away and then they come out and then they go away. And yeah, it can be pretty annoying, but I would highly recommend just get on the first jut, like jump in the air while it's down and then land in it while it's coming up. And then there's actually a couple of juts that don't move as you can see. So if you can land on those and just jump from one of those to the next, that is your key to success. Now, once you're done jumping up all of these struts, you're going to head forward and see, of course, a cryopod ultimate reference to Halo. Then you're going to open it up and you will get an anomalous object. The last thing you need to do is simply go to the tower and interact with the gunsmith as you can see, and he is outright going to give you the Forerunner exotic sidearm. This is a pretty crazy one, guys. It's a sidearm that actually uses special ammo. So expect this thing to hit pretty darn hard. Guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.